In this video, we will be comparing PWM and MPPT type charge controllers. This is video 4 of my series on RV suitcase solar chargers. And if you've not watched the other videos yet, I'll provide a link here because each video tends to build on the previous ones. Both PWM and MPPT are acronyms. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. And there are $50 words that really don't mean much. So I'll just try to cover the salient characteristics of why we'd use one over the other rather than getting into the minutia. The controller to the left is an inexpensive Renogy PWM controller. The controller on the right is a Victron MPPT controller. They're both suitable for low power solar applications. The Renogy charge controller is limited to 10 amps, while the Victron controller can handle 15 amps. But there's really a little more involved in that. With the Renogy charge controller, you can only run a 20 volt panel, so it's basically limited to 100 watts. The Victron charge controller, on the other hand, can handle multiple panels in series which allows the maximum of 75 volts on the solar panel and an output of 15 amps to the battery. The higher voltage capability of the Victron charge controller is one benefit of an MPPT controller, as it allows you to use higher voltage solar panels than what a PWM charge controller would allow. Now one thing about the Victron is that it does not come with a display. It only has LEDs for the different charge states. However, it is a Bluetooth capable controller, so the display in fact is your smartphone. And the reason I went with the Victron controller is I already have a BMV 700 battery monitor. And this actually will integrate with that monitor, so it's more of a DC management system. There are a couple options available with the Victron controller, and that is the ability to monitor the voltage and the temperature at the battery. And if you watched, again, my previous videos, you know that if you can monitor the voltage remotely at the battery, then the charger can compensate for any voltage drop across the wires. And that is done by one of two modules. We have both modules here. We have a blue one and we have a black one. And the only difference between the two modules is the black one is limited to a Bluetooth range of three feet or one meter. The blue one has an extended range of 10 meters or 33 feet. It's kind of surprising that they have two products that do essentially the same thing. The voltage and temperature monitor is basically a separate unit, but it does integrate with both the BMV 700 and with the charge controller. In fact, you can use the voltage and temperature monitors separately. And this has a self-adhesive strip on the back that you attach to the side of the battery and a positive and negative lead that go directly to the battery with a fuse. And that's it. If you have either a Victron BMV702 or a BMV712 battery management system, you do not need the SmartSense dongle as both temperature and voltage are reported by that device across the Bluetooth network. However, if you have a BMV700 like I do, then the Smart dongle will report the temperature but not the voltage because the BMV700 can report voltage but not battery temperature. In reality, the only time you will be using both temperature and voltage from the SmartSense dongle is if the Vicron charge controller is used standalone, that is without any battery management system. This charge controller was around $110 if I recall. So a little more expensive. Uh, this one does have a USB port so you could charge something that's USB and then the RS-232 port could connect to a Bluetooth device where this one already has Bluetooth built in. So this is a 75 volt 15 amp and you can buy various voltages and current so you can match the particular charge controller to your needs. Also has load terminal sensing just like this one did that we described in the last video. And it does have a built-in fuse. A PWM based charge controller is by far cheaper than the MPPT ones. And they're better suited for smaller installations so they're a pretty good fit actually for the suitcase solar panels. And the best way I can describe PWM is it's kind of like a dimmer switch. If you have a dimmer switch in your RV it's probably PWM based. And PWM basically turns the circuit on and off rapidly hundreds of times a second. 
What's important is something called the duty cycle. That is a percentage of time that the switch is on versus the switch is off. And the duty cycle can run from 100%, which means on all the time, down to 0%, which means off all the time. So if you have a 50% duty cycle, the switch will be on 50% of the time and off 50% of the time. Let's say we have a 12 volt source and we put a PWM signal on that. We're going to have 12 volts for half the time and 0 volts for the other half time. So the average between those two is 6 volts. If we have a duty cycle of 75%, then we have a result of 9 volts. And likewise, a 25% duty cycle will give you 3 volts. So we can vary the average voltage by varying the duty cycle of the PWM signal. That's basically how PWM works. The disadvantage is that the charge controller needs to output a certain voltage to the battery. The solar panel has to be just a few volts above that for it to work. So in other words, if we have a 12 volt battery that may run up to 14.4 or whatever the bolt charge is, the solar panel should be around 18 to 20 volts because anything higher than the 14 volts that the charge controller needs is wasted energy. And as a result, a PWM charger is about 80% efficient. So it would do no good to put two panels in series to give us 40 volts because we'd be wasting all that other voltage above the required 18 volts or so that the charge controller needs. A PWM charge controller, therefore, cannot use any voltage above what the battery needs. Any excess voltage is wasted energy. An MPPT charge controller, on the other hand, essentially has what's known as a DC to DC converter or a buck boost converter so that it can match the battery's voltage requirement to the solar panel output. In this graphic, let's assume we have two 100 watt solar panels tied in series giving us 200 watts at 40 volts. And when that's fed into the MPPT controller, it needs 20 volts to charge the battery. It converts that 40 volts at 5 amps to 20 volts at 10 amps for the same 200 watt result. So the DC to DC converter in an MPPT charger essentially converts voltage into current and matches whatever the solar panel outputs to what the battery requires to charge. And for this reason, an NPTT charge controller is about 92% efficient. The advantages of a PWM charge controller are low cost, simplicity, and is okay for a small system. The disadvantages are that it's not scalable. You cannot add a combination of serial and parallel panels to the solar array. And the solar panel is limited basically to the battery voltage, and it is a lower efficiency than the MPPT controller. Advantages of an MPPT charge controller are higher efficiency, the solar panel voltage is independent of the battery voltage, and it is scalable. You can use many combinations of parallel and serial panels to create a solar array. The disadvantages include higher cost, complexity, and it's probably overkill for simple systems. Well, I've wasted another 8 minutes of your time explaining the differences between PWM and MPPT controllers. And at this point, if you're still interested, in the next video I'll be upgrading the PWM controller that I installed in my RV to an MPPT controller.